أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على ثم الصلاة والسلام على آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المذلومين واللعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الناس من يتخذ من دون الله أندادا يحبونهم كحب الله والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله صلوات سورة البقرة chapter 2 of the Quran verse 165 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing to the fact that most human beings have an object that they worship even the person who says I am an atheist I do not believe in God he worships something he worships his beliefs he worships his ideals there are those who worship property there are those who worship immaterial objects there are those who worship their career there are those who worship idols and then there are those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa min an-nasi man yattakhidhu min duni Allah andadan and amongst people there are some who take objects of worship besides God yuhibbunahum ka hubbillah they love them they yearn for them as they ought to have loved Allah that means in Allah's estimation that means according to the Quran the only natural obsession is to be obsessed with Allah as far as the Quran is concerned if a person loves with an obsession if a person yearns for something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that love and that yearning is misplaced that yearning is unnatural as far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned that's why he says they love them kahubbillah yuhibbunahum these objects of worship they love them as they ought to have loved Allah but those who believe are not one of these people why because the verse continues walladhina amanu ashaddu hubban lillah but as for those who believe they have an intense love for Allah subhanahu ashad there is this emphasis that those who believe alladhina amanu their love is intense for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this verse of the Quran will form the basis or the theme of our discussion starting tonight inshallah in a series of madlasas that we have entitled the art of yearning for god the reason why we chose this title yearning for god and not love for god or love for allah is because yearning suggests a certain active intense and ardent desire for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereas the word love suggests something that is more passive something that is more internalized and we will see lots and lots of examples in history uh, of this active and eager and intense desire for Allah a yearning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our objectives in these nights starting tonight until the end of Ramadan inshallah will be five our first objective will be to prove or understand the validity of this idea of yearning for Allah from Quran and from hadith does the Quran and hadith support this idea that a person 
should become obsessed in his search for Allah. Our second objective will be to look at the history of those who yearn for Allah in the lives of the prophets and the imams and the uh, awliya and the uh, mu'mineen. Our third objective will be to then analyze these examples in history and look at the symptoms. What are the symptoms of one who yearns for Allah? Can we break this down and say, these are the qualities that you will find in a person who yearns for Allah. Our fourth objective will be to identify the prerequisites for a person who wishes to become like one of them. In order for a person to yearn for Allah, what do they require? And then our fifth and final objective will be to then uh, mention practical steps that we can uh, undertake or qualities that we can adopt so that we may fulfill those prerequisites and therefore experience what the uh, Anbiya and the Aima alayhimu salam experienced in their yearning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This yearning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Arabic, the equivalent of yearning for God would be ashawq ilallah. So the word yearning here is represented in, uh, in hadith as shawq. In Arabic, there are two different words that you could have used to show um, a certain intimacy with God or a certain yearning or a certain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And both of these are the product of having an intense love for Allah. One would be shawq. And the one who expresses this shawq, the one who yearns for God would be called mushtaq. The other word would be uns. And the one who expresses this uns would be called anis. Now, on a finer point, the difference between shawq and uns is that when something is far and we long for it, then we express shawq for it. But when something is very close to us, and we enjoy the company and being intimate with that object of our yearning, then we refer to that as uns. That is why in Arabic they will say, ashawq ilallah, but they will say, al uns billah. Ilallah means to Allah. Billah means with Allah. So the ilah is to, and the ba is with. So uns billah. That intimacy and that closeness is with Allah because there there is a sense of Allah being near. His proximity is felt and enjoyed. But in shawq, there is a feeling that Allah is removed and there is a yearning for Him. And that is where I find myself placed to begin with and I think a lot of us may be able to identify with that. So for the purpose of these uh, um, sessions, we will inshallah focus on Shawk, but you will see the word uns as well appearing uh, time and again. So, to set the ball rolling then, I want to first begin with a passage from Abu Abdullah, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. What this passage will do is it will set the platform and it will give you a very good idea of where these lectures are going and what is the uh, what is the mood and what is the manner of thinking that we are trying to uh, share here. There are actually some passages here from the sixth Imam alayhi salam first before he starts talking about yearning for God that I just want to mention briefly. He talks about first what is ma'rifat of Allah and who is an arif. Then he talks a little bit about the love of Allah or hub of Allah. And then he comes to yearning. So the main part that I want to share with you is the yearning. But before I come to that, let's just look at what he says first about one who knows Allah, one who is an arif, one who is a Gnostic. He says, Al-arif shakhsuhu ma'al khalq wa qalbuhu ma'allah. The arif is one whose body or person is with the people, but his heart is with Allah. وَلَوْ سَهَا قَلْبُهُ عَنِ اللَّهِ طَرْفَةُ عَيْنٍ 
Lamata Shawkan Ilay. And the Arif is one who, if his heart was to forget Allah for the twinkling of an eye, he would die out of yearning for Allah. Then he says, the Arif is one who needs neither people, nor a goal, nor this world. فَلَا مُؤْنِسَ لَهُ سِوَ الله. He has no intimate, he has no very special, very close friend except Allah. This is the Arif. Then as sadiq goes on. Now he's talking about the love of Allah. He says, when, when the love of Allah takes possession of the innermost being of a person, it empties him of every preoccupation other than the remembrance of Allah. Okay. And when he attains this level, then the angels compete with each other to converse with him, and they boast over each other over having seen him. This is the one who loves Allah. If people knew this person who loves Allah, who has emptied himself or herself of every preoccupation other than the remembrance of Allah, this person who does not seek comfort or joy or happiness in anything besides Allah, neither food nor drink nor sports nor any worldly business occupies him other than Allah. If people knew the rank of this person with Allah, they would not try and draw near to Allah with anything other than the dust of his feet. Okay, this is the person who loves Allah. Then Imam al-Sadiq quotes a hadith from his grandfather, Amir al-Mu'mineen salam, in which he says, Allah salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Here Amir al-Mu'mineen defines what is love of Allah. Hubbu Allahi narun. The love of Allah is a fire. La yamurru ala shay'in illa ihtarak. It does not pass over anything except that it burns it up. وَنُورُ اللَّهِ لَا يَطْلُعُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِلَّا أَضَاءَهُ And the light of Allah does not shine on anything except that it lights it up. The emphasis here is on the first part. That when a person truly begins to learn what it means to love Allah, then it is not so difficult to imagine why they become preoccupied only with Allah. Because the love of Allah is a fire. When it sparks and it kindles in the heart of a believer, it burns everything. Siwa Allah. Hubbullahi narun. La yamurru ala shay'in illa ihtarak. Now, this is the preamble. He has talked about who an arif is. He has talked about what the love of Allah is. Now, we come to what is yearning. And I think this will be a very good uh, introduction to the subject. First, he talks about who is one who yearns. Who is a mushtaq? Al-mushtaq la yashtahi ta'aman wa la yaltaddu sharaban. One who yearns for God neither desires food nor finds any pleasure in drinking, drinking water. وَلَا يَسْتَطِيبُ رُقَادًا وَلَا يَعْنَسُ حَمِيمًا Neither is he quickly excitable, nor is he intimate even with the closest of his friends. You will find that he may have friends, he may have people who know him, but he doesn't have a friend who is so close that he is dependent or possessive of that relationship or extremely intimate in that friendship. He does not have anyone besides Allah. وَلَا يَأْوِي دَارًا وَلَا يَسْكُنُ عُمْرَانًا وَلَا يَلْبِسُ لَيِّنًا وَلَا يَقِرُّ قَرَارًا Neither does he seek refuge in a house, nor does he dwell in a city, nor does he wear uh, many garments, nor does he take enough rest for his need. Here, what the Imam is trying to say is, one who yearns for God, does not find any sense of peace or comfort or security because of having a house, or is not too much concerned about the clothes that he wears, that they should be expensive or they should be very comfortable, um, or that he should have enough rest or that he should live in a large city. These things do not 
worry him or her. وَيَعْبُدُوا لَيْلًا وَنَهَارًا رَاجِيًا بِأَنْ يَصِلُوا إِلَى مَا يَشْتَاقُوا إِلَيْهِ He worships Allah day and night, hoping to reach the object of his yearning. So there is a constant worship, day and night, in the hope of reaching this object of his yearning. وَيُنَاجِيهِ بِلِسَانِ الشَّوْقِ مُعَبِّرًا عَمَّا فِي سَرِيرَتِهِ and he speaks to Allah with a tongue of yearning, declaring what is in his innermost being. In other words, unlike people like myself who may pray as a ritual, Ya Allah, Ya Rahmanu, Ya Rahim, or you know, du'as, or whatever it is, when he prays, he doesn't pray with his tongue or his mind. He or she prays with his whole being. The whole being is focused. And there is this yearning. He prays, the Imam says, Bilisani shawq. There is a yearning. There is an intense desire even in that praying. Now we come to a very important passage here. The Imam is now trying to give us an example in history of what this yearning means. He says, this yearning is, Kama akbar Allahu ta'ala an Musa alayhi salam fi mi'adi rabbihi. This yearning is as an example the way Allah describes the condition of Musa alayhi salam when he came to meet him on the mountain. And here first Imam alayhi salam quotes a verse from Surah Taha which is chapter 20 of the Quran. He quotes verse 80 which says, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي لِتَرْضَى Musa alayhi salam is saying to Allah, My Lord, I have come running to you that you may be pleased with me. But before we come to this verse first, let's just uh, uh, interrupt this and digress and take a snapshot of what is happening here. There is a verse before this verse that will make this verse even stronger. Who is Musa alayhi salam and at what point is he expressing this yearning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Musa alayhi salam grew up in the palace of Fir'aun. He had an incident where he boxed or slapped an Egyptian who killed, who died. He killed him. Then in fear of his life, he fled. He went to Madain where he met another prophet called Shu'ayb alayhi salam. He married one of the daughters of Shu'ayb alayhi salam. So he was the son-in-law of Nabi Shu'ayb. On the agreement that he would work as a servant for Shu'ayb for eight or ten years. So he lived with Shu'ayb in Madain for a while. Then he took his wife and children and his family and he left. He went out, he saw a fire burning on a mountain. He told his family, perhaps I will find some heat or some light. I will come back to you shortly. And he goes there. And that has a deep mystical truth as well that we will talk about in the coming night. Uh, what it means to say, I see a fire, perhaps I will get some heat there. And he goes forth. There he has... Uh, an amazing encounter where there is a burning bush. There is a bush there set alight with fire and speaks to him from there saying, Inni ana Allah, la ilaha illa ana, I am Allah, O Musa, there is no God but me. And there he is given the task to go to Fir'aun to free the Bani Israel. He goes to Bani Israel, uh, he goes to Fir'aun and there are miracles he shows. There is the serpent, there is other miracles uh, until he finally convinces Fir'aun to let the people go. He takes his people with him. At first, Musa salam was alone. He fled Egypt in fear for his life. He was a humble shepherd for eight or ten years. Nothing to his name. Now, he has a whole following with him. The whole tribe, the whole Bani Israel are with him. He takes them to the edge of a sea where Fir'aun is pursuing them. He splits the sea in two halves. And the people cross with him. And there the army of Fir'aun is drowned. He comes across to the other side. Now he is a leader. Now he has power. Now he has fame. Now he has security. Now he has everything that human beings on a day-to-day -day basis desire. What does now Musa alayhi salam lack? He's got everything he wants. He is now told, come to the mountain to receive the commandments for your people. 
It goes for 30 days and it's extended to 10 more days, it becomes 40 days. So now bring to your imagination Musa alayhi salam going to meet Allah. This is the meeting that the sixth imam is talking about. It appears there is this restlessness in Musa alayhi salam. He is running up the mountain. He is jumping over the boulders. He is climbing at full speed, eagerly waiting to reach that point where he will hear the voice of his beloved. Now as he runs and he reaches there, Allah is now teasing him. This is the teasing of a beloved with his lover. We will talk about this. You will see when there is a Habib and a Mahbub, there is almost a, 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 a similarity to on a day-to-day basis that we relate to as romantic love. But that is not real love. This is real love between an Abd and Ma'bud. And here Allah asks him a question. This is the verse before this verse of chapter 20, verse 84. Chapter 20, verse 83. Allah knows why Musa salam has come running to him. Musa has everything. He's got power. He's got domination over his whole tribe. He's got his career all set. What else does he need? Allah first asks him. This is chapter 20, verse 83. وَمَا أَعْجَلَكَ أَنْ قَوْمِكَ يَا مُوسَى Why have you come running to me, O Musa? What is it you want from me, O Musa? وَمَا أَعْجَلَكَ I wish, you know, if you knew Arabic, you would see every word here is just perfect. Every word has its own strength here. وَمَا أَعْجَلَكَ أَنْ قَوْمِكَ يَا مُوسَى What brings you with such haste to me from your people, O Musa? Why have you come running to me, O Musa? Now Musa replies, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ يَا رَبِّي لِتَرْضَى I have come running to you, my Lord, that you may be pleased with me. That means Musa salam is expressing this yearning. He is saying to Allah, You have given me everything I ever wanted. It has not satisfied me. There is still a gap in my life. There is something missing in my heart. What is missing? You are missing. You are that food that does not satiate me. You are that drink, no matter how much I drink, my thirst remains. Now this is not just me trying to uh, impose my understanding of the verse. No, no, no. The sixth imam now continues. So Musa alayhi salam we have seen Allah says to him, why have you come running? I have come running to you because of my uh, desire for you, that you may be pleased with me. Now Imam al-Sadiq says, وَفَصَّرَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنْ حَالِهِ The Messenger of Allah did tafsir of this verse. He explained this verse, what it means. What was Musa's condition? The Prophet of Allah said, إِنَّهُ مَا أَكَلَ وَلَا شَرِبَ وَلَا نَامَ وَلَا اشْتَهَى شَيْئًا مِنْ ذَلِكَ فِي ذِهَابِهِ وَمَجِيِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا شَوْقًا إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ Musa alayhi salam did not drink or eat or sleep or desire anything in his coming and going for 40 days out of his yearning for his Lord. It doesn't sound very possible or sane when we think of it from a material point of view. But that is because we don't know what it means to be in love with Allah. We, doesn't, we, don't, we haven't experienced that yearning. We don't know what it means when Allah's love burns a person. He says he lost all interest in eating or drinking or sleeping or coming or going. He was restless for 40 days in his yearning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having explained this, now the sixth Imam alayhi salam says how you should yearn for Allah. When you enter the arena of yearning, when you enter, when you have decided that now you want to yearn for Allah, then say takbir for yourself and your desires in this world. When do you say takbir for a person? When they die, right? You keep the mayyit in front of you, then you recite salatul mayyit. You recite your takbir for the mayyit. So he says, when you have decided to enter the arena for yearning, then say takbir for yourself and for your desires in this world. Bid farewell to all familiar things, and turn away from everyone except the one that you desire the most. 
walabbi baina hayatika wa mautika labbaik allahumma labbaik and say the words labbaik between your life and your death constantly at your service allah here i am at your service oh allah then allah will make your reward great azam allah ajraka he says may allah make your reward great now here then comes the punch line this is the 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 punch line that i want to uh, pass on to you for tonight the whole discussion the whole introduction we've done to yearning here is now the bottom line from imam as-sadiq alayhi salam wa mathalul mushtaq mathalul gharib the example of one who yearns for allah is like the example of one who is drowning ليس له همة إلا خلاصه وقد نسي كل شيء دونه one who is drowning is not concerned with anything else except saving himself and forgets everything else this is something to reflect about think of a person who is drowning when a person who is drowning what is it that occupies a person who is drowning Can you think of a person who is drowning but thinking of anything else besides saving his life? Can you think of a person drowning and saying, "Oh, that's my cell phone going" or or "Oh, I forgot that on my to-do list." Or "I'm in trouble, I'm going to be late home today." All right? One who is drowning has no preoccupation except saving himself. One who yearns for Allah has no preoccupation. that means physically he may continue doing what he does on a day to day basis but there is nothing that obsesses him there is nothing that gives him joy it is not sports it's not television it's not food it's not drink it's nothing say wallah this forms the basis of our discussion i think you have a fair idea of where we are going with this so in the coming nights now inshallah we will develop this we will interrupt this discussion over the nights of qadr inshallah where we will dedicate some of our uh, um, discussions to Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad but other than that we will develop this subject now we will see the examples of other prophets and then i will show you from history the yearning of Muhammad and ali Muhammad it will blow our minds away we will see our imams differently when i tell you the yearning of zainul abidin when i tell you the yearning of al baqi when i tell you the yearning of al qadim there are beautiful narrations in our books of how they express this and we will see even though we call ourselves their shia how far we are removed from that now this will no doubt raise a lot of questions and a lot of objections because the more you hear of these narrations there will be this idea that i am encouraging you to become uh, somewhat of an extremist in certain uh, areas and and the question that will keep coming the most is how do you reconcile this with the idea of being moderate in islam and we will answer this inshallah to your satisfaction uh, in the coming nights so we stop here for tonight and we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim may allah bless us in this nights of ramadan may allah give us tawfiq to understand the value of the month of ramadan May Allah help us realize that the nights are passing away we have completed half the month and as these nights are fleeting may Allah give us the courage to push ourselves and worship him with an intense desire so that our Eid may truly become an Eid Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim